Hey you, welcome to The Art of Code. My name is Martijn, and what you see spinning behind me here is a torus or trefoil knot. And um, it is not too, too hard to make, and you can make many cool looking effects with it, and there's many different variations on it. Uh, so I thought I'd make a video about it. So, if that interests you, stick around. So before we get started coding this thing, I thought it'd be good to go through some th theory again on how to get the distance to a torus. I did this in another video, uh, but for sake of completeness, let's just do it again. So basically a torus is just uh, two circles. It's a, it's a big circle and then it's a small circle that is used to, to revolve around the big circle to make the surface of a torus. And um, so how do we get the distance to this from any arbitrary point? Um, so here I have a point P and, uh, and that point is above the XZ plane. So over here I drew the circle as if it's lying in like flat on the ground on the XZ plane. And, um, and we have a point over here that is above the XZ plane. That's why it's casting a little shadow over here and uh, it's a certain distance from that plane. Um, now, in order to get the distance to, to the torus, uh, we just want to get the, the shortest distance to, to the circle over there. And um, uh, in order to do that, uh, we have to get this x and this y value. If we get this x and this y value, then with Pythagoras, we could just get this d value, and then we can just subtract the, the radius of the small circle, and there you have the distance to your torus. So now the question becomes, how do we get this x and this y value? Um, well, uh, we, can, we can just uh, take, take a point, uh, like the point P projected onto the, onto the plane, which would just be a vector 2, right, a P, X, Z. Um, and, and now we can just get the, this x value by taking the length of P, X, Z. And the length of P, X, Z just gives me the distance from this point to this point to the origin. So, so this, is, this is the distance to a torus that is located at the origin. That is basically always the case when you, when you make any kind of shape, the functions are always, um, always assume that your shape is located at the origin. So in this case also, uh, this is the origin. So, so the entire distance from here to here is just the length of this, of this point here or the length of the vector from here, from the origin to over here. Um, and, then, uh, and then we have um, obviously this entire length, but we need only length x. Well, for that, we just need to subtract the radius of the first circle. This is that r1 over there. So that's how you get the x value. Now for the y value, it's even simpler, because for the y value, we just take the y component of the point that we uh, that we want to calculate the distance to. And so now that we have the x and the y, uh, we can get this d value uh, very simple because we can just make, this is just Pythagoras basically, this is just uh, x squared plus y squared and then the square root of that. That is the same as, as this basically. So here we're making a vector 2 out of the x and the y component and then we're just getting the length of that which is, which is the same thing. Um, <clears throat> and now we again have overestimated the distance because that is the distance to, to the circle here, to the, to the infinitely thin torus. Uh, and so now we just need to subtract the distance from, um, or like now we need to subtract the radius of the small circle, which is R2. Okay, and, and so essentially what we're doing here is we're making this into a 2D problem, right? Uh, once we have the x and the y, now this just becomes a 2D problem. Uh, and now uh, we just get the distance from a 2D point to a 2D circle, uh, which is exactly this. All right, so let's try to implement this. Okay, so now this video is about how to make a torus knot. It's not about how to make a ray marcher. So I'm going to skip over the whole ray marching um, situation. Uh, so what I would suggest you do is click in the link in the description uh, that is the starting point for this tutorial uh, and that will bring you to this uh, ray marching starting point. Um, <clears throat> so anything in this video is, is 
uh, is described in great detail in other videos. If you want to know how to make a ray marcher, I, I highly um, encourage you to watch the video Ray Marching for Dummies, uh, for which I have a link in the description below. Uh, but if you already know how to ride a ray marcher or if you just want to follow along from, uh, from the starting point, uh, then you can just click on the, on the starting link and, and, uh, and let's get going with that. All right, so here we have a ray marcher with just a simple cube that I can spin around. And uh, let me just collapse some, some functions that we're not going to uh, worry about today. Um, and really the meat and potatoes of this is inside of the get dist function, right? So here we have uh, the distance to a box. So let's make that the distance to a torus. All right, so uh, what we just did was, uh, well, first we get the, the distance to the, to the flat circle on the ground. So that's the length of XZ minus some radius, right, R1. And uh, let's just also make that R1 equals uh, one, let's say. Um, and then uh, we have to get, um, though we have to make this into a vector two. So this was just our X component of the vector two. Our Y component of the vector two would be P dot Y. And so let's bake this into a vector two. So we do it like that. Uh, and now we need to get the length of that, the length of that minus some, the, minus the small radius, which would be R2, right? So, and for R2, we can say R2 equals, let's say 0.2, all right? And there is your torus. Awesome. So simple enough. Uh, let me just uh, zoom in a little bit or actually just make the torus larger. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess we could, we could do this. Um, all right. So, um, so now we have, so, so, so this here is the, this here is the distance to the big circle. And then here, this is the, this is kind of the 2D distance to, to, uh, to uh, well, the distance to a 2D circle, basically. Um, but what we can do here is we can, we, can, we can revolve any kind of shape around the circle. So right now we're revolving a circle around a circle, right? But we can revolve any other shape around the circle. For instance, so we start out with just revolving one circle, but because this now is just a 2D, a 2D distance problem, uh, we, can, we can just as easily get the distance to two circles like this. Uh, so let's try to do that. Um, so for that, let's see here. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me just take this out here. So this, this part over here, uh, let's call this circle pause, CP, vec2, CP equals equals that, so that doesn't change anything. Um, because now we kind of have it separate, separated. So first we get, we get our, our, like our coordinates in, in um, basically our 2D coordinates, right? That is just basically which slice, which slice of the torus we're looking at. Uh, and then here, this is just the distance to, to a circle. Okay. Um, and so what we could do here is, uh, well, we could move that circle. So we could say a minus vec to, let's say, uh, if we wanted to move it up, we could go, let's say like that, and then it moves it up, right? And we can also move it down like that. And so we can have two circles by, by just taking the, the minimum value of, of one where, where the circle is, uh, where the circle is above, and then another one where the circle is below, okay, like that. So now we have two circles. So that's one way of doing it. That's not how I'm gonna do it uh, because there is a nicer way to do that. So let me just get back to where I was. Uh, so I go over here. I'm gonna cut all that stuff out again. You can see here, so that was the, the first one, okay. All right, because what we can do is we can make use of symmetries. So whenever, Whenever you're making a shader and you want to make it performant and fast, you want to see what kind of symmetries you have available to play with. And so if we have, uh, instead of one circle in the middle, we have one circle above and one circle below, well, that's symmetrical, right? So we can make use of that. Um, and the way we can make use of that is in this case, we could, we could, um, 
we could just flip the y coordinate and make it or like fold the y coordinate so so here's the positive y here's the negative y and the absolute will just take the negative y and fold it onto the positive y uh, so cp dot y and uh, if I just do this you would not see a difference because like what it's doing now really is folding the bottom of the the bottom of the torus onto the top of the torus and because the torus is symmetrical from top to bottom you do not see a difference um, but watch what happens now if I like if I move this now so if I if I like move this away from the origin now you can see that wherever it was so basically I like I'm just moving it up now uh, but because of the absolute it, it um, because the bottom of the screen is folded onto the top uh, you get the other one for free and so now we have two tori for the price of one that's pretty cool um, all right so now what I want to do is uh, let's uh, play around with this a little bit so we have um, so we have basically two circles and uh, what we could do is uh, we could rotate those two circles around their own origin so their own origin is right in the middle right so we could rotate that, that around and let's see what that looks like and so in order to rotate those two circles I just have to rotate this CP value that I get here I just have to rotate my coordinate system basically and so in order to do that I can just use my rotate function which is part of this template it's over here um, uh, I've used it many times before this is a 2d rotation formula that you should really memorize and actually I can make it a little bit shorter I could just do that um, so yeah so that is part of this template otherwise you'd have to make it um, and so now we could rotate this so we could rotate this based on I time let's say uh, would you look at that uh, that's already pretty groovy looking I think uh, Let's go here. All right. Um, okay, but I don't want to rotate it like that. Well, I do want to rotate it like that, but not everywhere at the same uh, at the same phase. So basically, what I would want is so 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 right now this rotation happens the same way all along the edge of the along the perimeter of the torus. Uh, but what what I would want is that 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 rotation happens at a slightly different time uh, for each different perimeter point. And if you want to do something that is different along a perimeter of something, uh, then instantly you should think about polar coordinates because uh, that's how you can how you can do that. And uh, polar coordinates are pretty are pretty simple to deal with. So what you can what we can do here is we can get an angle. And so to get the angle around the center point here, which is kind of like the hands of a clock, uh, you can just use an ATAN function for that. And then we just throw p.x p and p.z into it. And that gives me the polar angle between minus pi and pi. Okay. Uh, and so that gives me a number that is minus pi at some point, And then it goes all the way to zero. And then from zero all the way to pi. Uh, and so let's see what happens if we use that instead of the i time. And now like a magic trick where you just pull two rings out of one now you have two rings that are interlocking here and um, and when we think about that for a second that kind of it, it kind of makes sense because we have um, yeah so so this goes from minus pi to pi so it, it's 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 a two pi distance right and when you rotate something by two pi that's the same as uh, as 360 degrees so so if you have those two circles then they start out like this and then along the perimeter they start rotating and in the end they end up exactly the way they started okay so um, so to start an endpoint of both of both tori of both circles here uh, like they connect to themselves basically and so that's why you get two interlocking shapes over here um, but we don't have to do a full rotation we could do a half a rotation right because if if we rotate 180 degrees then 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 this one would just map onto that one and that one would map onto that one right so so watch what happens if i only do half a rotation <clears throat> so now we have one shape now it connects to itself how cool is that all right and so uh well, we can do half a rotation but we can also do uh so that's one rotation we could do two rotations three rotations 
So if this is a whole number, then it will make a whole number of rotations. So it will always connect to itself. So, so meaning it will always uh, be two shapes that are connected, right? Um, and uh, but we want uh, we want one torus knot. So we're just going to do the and a half rotation. <clears throat> and there is your torus knot, uh, nice and pixely. Okay, I had, to, I had to jump to Firefox real quick because um, because the it was getting pixelated in full screen. It really annoys me. So so uh, so yeah. But we're back. Okay. Uh, so let's make this thing a little bit more presentable. Uh, so for that, let me just go down to the main function over here, main image. And uh, let's start by sticking in a background here. So what I can do over here, after I get my ray direction, I can say call plus equals the background. And that's a function I'm going to make. And as an input, I'm just going to give the, the ray direction. So I often do <clears throat> I often do this where I make a background function, which is just a function that that gives me a background color based on only a direction, not a position. And so yeah, because it, like a background you know would be very far away, so the position wouldn't really matter that much. Uh, so that's why I do that. Uh, so let's make this function. So vec three bg takes as an input a ray direction. And as an output, it's going to give me a color, right? So we're going to go vec3 call equals, um, well, equals something. And then I'm going to return that call. Um, and then what does it equal? Um, well, I'm going to do something where it's a different color all the way at the top versus all the way at the bottom. And uh, for that, I can just take my, I can just take the Y component of the, of the ray direction. Uh, because the Y component is going to be plus one all the way at the top and it's going to be minus one all the way at the bottom. Um, so let me just remap that and call that value K. So I'm going to say RD dot Y times 0.5 plus 0.5. That's just to get it into the zero one range. And now I can use a mix over here to mix two different colors, namely a color that I wanted all the way at the bottom versus a color that I wanted all the way at the top. And then I just use that value K to blend between those two. And so all the way at the bottom, let's say I want some dark reddish color. So let's say something like that. And at the top, I want some lightish blue color. Let's say something like this maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so that gives me something that is blue at the top and reddish at the bottom. Um, so I think that's good enough for now. And so now this, uh, the, the, the knot itself kind of blows out a little bit. And uh, that is because over here we're just adding it. And um, so instead of just using a diffuse here, let's, let's use that same background uh, to, to also shade the object itself. So we have kind of like an environment shading um, uh, situation going on. Uh, so for that first, I need to calculate the, the, the reflected vector uh, for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate a VEC3R for reflection. And uh, that is the reflection. There's just the function for that that reflects, that reflects uh, a vector around another vector. So the vector we want to reflect is the I vector, right? It's the vector that goes from the camera through the pixel uh, into the scene. And in this case, that's called RD. And then when it hits the surface, it, we need to know how the surface is oriented and then we figure out how it's reflecting, right? And so it's, it's oriented in the way or in the direction of the normal. So we just add the normal and that's how we get the reflection. And now we can just go over here and instead of div, we can say BG uh, of that reflected vector. And that gives us something like this. Uh, yeah, oh, and I, and I don't want to add it, right? So I just want to do that, actually. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I think I would want to make it a little bit less um, colored like this. So what I could do is I could still use this diffuse value, uh, but I could use a mix to, to kind of attenuate that a little bit. So I could say, uh, and div is a float, and then here we need a color. So 
I just need to cast that to a color and then I could say, okay, take only half of that. So now uh, we're halfway between that environment color and just a normal diffuse color. Um, and I think that could be, that could be pretty cool. Um, all right, so what else? Um, yeah, I suppose we could add a really cheap looking, uh, or not looking, but a really cheap uh, specular effect by like assuming that there are some specular like reflection immediately above the, um, above the shape. Uh, so what we could do is, um, I guess we could, we could take the, the Y value of, of our reflected, uh, of our reflected vector and, um, and the more that points up, the more, the more we're going to reflect. So let's, let's, let's see real quick here what that looks like. And this is kind of hacky. Normally you would do this maybe slightly different, but for now, I'm just going to, I'm just going to keep it simple. So I'm going to add this spec here and I'll let you see what that looks like. Okay. So we get something like that. Now this spec can get negative. Uh, that's obviously not what we want. So, uh, we're just going to do that. Um, and then, uh, this is, uh, this is way too much. And so, um, we can attenuate that by multiplying it by itself. So if, if I just look at this by itself real quick, so call equals vec three spec, let's say, all right, that's this. Uh, and so this is a certain roughness. If we want this to be more sharp, uh, if we want sharper highlights, then we, what we could do is we could multiply this value by itself. Um, because if you multiply a value by itself, then all the values that are very close to one get, get, are very close to zero, get pushed down even more to zero. And, 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 and the values that are close to one stay close to one. Um, just, uh, just check out Desmos, uh, to see, to see how that works. Um, so what I can do here, yeah, so I could, I could multiply this by itself, right. To get it, to get it more. And then I could keep doing that. Uh, until I have something that works. Um, but there is a function for that, so we don't have to do that. So I can just go over here and say pow for power. And then here I could say two or three or 200 or whatever. And so that's how you can make like values sharper and sharper by keep, like, you, you keep multiplying them by themselves. Um, okay, so we have something like that. And now let's just add that over here and Get rid of that over there and now we have a nice specular highlight on this thing um all right so one more thing here is that if we just go back uh let me just collapse collapse all this stuff uh all right so over here we're getting the distance to uh to a circle like at the 2d distance or the distance to a 2d circle um but we don't have to do that. We could, we could use any, any uh, 2D distance function here. Uh, for instance, let's make one for, for the box, okay, for a box. So over here, this, this one returns the distance to a 3D cube. Uh, let's just copy this and paste it and make a version that just gets the distance to a 2D box. So I call that SD box 2D. And that's going to take us an input, a 2D position and a uh, 2d size right a, a width and a height um, and then over here I just have to simplify it slightly so here I get the maximum for all points and so I don't have a z here so I can just take that out and so that should be good and so now over here I could just overwrite this value d by using sd box 2d 2d um, and we can take our our circle position into it and then uh, for the size we could say vec to I don't know 0.1 and 0.2 let's say let's see what that looks like okay so now we have a ribbon that is twisted like this and you can see that there are some screw-ups here and um, that is because this function isn't doesn't give me an exact distance estimate anymore um, and um, if that ever happens, that is not the end of the world. You could just make your steps slightly smaller. So uh, like 0.9, let's say you see that some stuff already disappeared. 0.8. Yeah, I think 0.8 is 0.8 works. Now this often works to make your 
your ray marched geometry look nicer um, but you got to be careful with this because because this also makes your ray marching a lot slower so so ideally you want to get you you, you would want to avoid it as much as possible uh, but in this case uh, I think there's not much we can do. All right, so there's that, and then maybe uh, maybe I want it rounded a little bit, so I will just subtract something from this to make them rounded, and uh, maybe push them apart a little bit more, like that. And uh, yeah, I think that's good. And then maybe um, maybe we could maybe we could rotate it so. Uh, over here where we're rotating originally where we're rotating the circles now we're rotating boxes uh, i just add a time to that so that it animates yeah and in this case it kind of like it just looks like it's rotating even though it's not rotating like this it's actually rotating like this um yeah uh and then what else could we do uh we could um we could for instance change the uh, change the width of this based on where we are around the around the circle I'll just make that a bit smaller uh, because this makes this makes it thinner right thinner and thicker um, so what we could do here is uh, let's say we could multiply it by something by the sign of uh, the uh, the polar angle uh, and that is between minus one and one so we have to just remap that to to the zero one range and so now I forgot a yeah okay uh, so now it will it will be thick on one side and uh, it should really be zero thickness on the other side I'm not entirely sure let me just take this out here for a second because it's confusing uh, let's see here multiply this to have it two times yeah I'm not entirely sure why that doesn't go oh yeah okay so that doesn't go all the way to zero because we still have this here okay um, so yeah, let me just make it a bit more pronounced and we could have that happen, let's say four times. Um, and then we have some crazy shape like that. Uh, let me just put this back. High time times 0.5, let's say. Yeah, see now we have a little bit of rotation in there that looks a little bit nicer. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it here for this one. Um, I'll probably do a future video, uh, part two about this, because there's more to say about trefoil knots. But um, but yeah, as you can see, this is not that hard to make, and you can make really cool things with it. So so right now we, we started with two circles, uh, but there's no, there's no reason why you could like you could have arbitrary many shapes that you that you twist. Um, so so one video that I'll probably make in the future is where we take three and we braid them and so instead of rotating them you like you have three and you, you kind of braid them um, I think that could be cool um, and then there's figuring out texture coordinates so you can stick a texture on this and, um, and then you know you could maybe have I don't know little animals walking on the surface or something like that but that is for a future video I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it here so um, if you if you like this, please click the like button. Please leave a comment. Please subscribe. Uh, if you want these videos a week early, then please uh, check out my Patreon. All Patrons get videos a week early, and you can be a patron for as little as one dollar. And um, and so yeah, that would be that would be cool. Anyways, uh, I hope you liked it, and I hope to see you next time.